pyroclastic flows. Considering you've already clicked on this video, you'll almost definitely have at least heard of pyroclastic flows, but I'm going to tell you all about them in this 101 guide and what you can do if you're caught anywhere near one. By the end of the video, I'd love to know whether you think you could escape one with the information from this video. Quick disclaimer, this isn't an official survival guide. In fact, if you keep watching, you'll hopefully realize that it's more of a warning that they're pretty close to guaranteed death. But education is the start of everything, so the more you know, the better. So what are pyroclastic flows? Pyroclastic flows are a dense, fast-moving flow of solidified lava pieces, volcanic ash, and hot gases. If it's mostly gas, it's called a surge, and they occur as part of certain volcanic eruptions. A pyroclastic flow is extremely hot, sometimes as high as 1,800 degrees Celsius. This is quite a lot hotter than anything that I can really compare to, so you have a reference for it. So I'll give you a little spoiler from later on in the video and say that 200 degrees is lethal to humans. In terms of speed, the general rule of thumb is to anticipate 100 kilometers per hour, but they will go well beyond that, with famous examples going up to 380 kilometers per hour. There are several different mechanisms that can produce a pyroclastic flow. Fountain collapse of an eruption column from a Plinian eruption. Think about Mount Vesuvius and Pompeii. In such an eruption, the material forcefully ejected upwards from the vent heats the surrounding air and the turbulent mixture rises through convection. If the eruption jet is unable to heat the surrounding air sufficiently, convection currents will not be strong enough to carry the plume upwards and it falls, flowing down the flanks of the volcano. Alternatively, there is the gravitational collapse of a lava dome or spine, with subsequent avalanches and flows down a steep slope. And finally, you have the directional blast or jet when a part of a volcano collapses or explodes. You can think about the eruption of Mount St. Helens. So why are pyroclastic flows dangerous? There are quite a few ways that the PDC will kill you. Closer to the volcano, they have similar physics to a nuclear blast. You've probably seen pictures of Hiroshima, buildings, trees, it's all flattened. Adding to the rocks and debris that's already flying past from the volcano. If you're in a building that gets hit, or downwind of any of that, you're very likely going to be crushed to death. Then you have heat shock and asphyxiation. While a lot of people say that inhaling the dust is what kills most people, and to be sure, that's one of the main reasons. Human airways are not designed to intake superheated dust and possibly poisonous gas as well, but I want to keep that for a slightly later section. Victims of pyroclastic flows are commonly described as appearing dried and mummified, rather than charred, which is the outcome usually observed with fire injuries. The victims of the famous eruption at Mount Pele were very often found with their intestines burst through their abdomens. We are dealing with heat conditions that cause your insides to burst out of you. What's more, evidence from Pompeii, Herculaneum, and the lesser known Oplontis have allowed scientists to guess at a more abnormal cause of death. What's weird is that most of the corpses were found in positions that looked as though they were still alive. This is called cadaveric spasm and is a rare form of instantaneous muscular stiffening associated with instant violent death. Such instant stiffening prevents the ordinary onset of muscular relaxation immediately after death, thus avoiding any further substantial body posture modification. There's also the gruesome detail that the higher temperatures at Herculaneum, believed to have been around 600 degrees, may have caused the soft tissues inside the skulls of the people caught by Vesuvius to boil and burst from the skull from the inside. This is thought to have taken just a few minutes after the first contact with the PDC. One of the alarming things that we now know about the eruption of Vesuvius is that the heat shock death remained a major cause of death as far away as 20 kilometers in Pompeii, evidenced by the lifelike positions of the corpses found there. So despite the fact that the blast force had subsided, PDCs remained instantly fatal at long range. So let's look at the non-instant death dangers of these. Any contact with PDCs is going to leave severe burns. There are reports of people losing all the skin from their legs as they wave away from the disaster area. Damage to your airways is obviously the most dangerous, and even if you survive the initial event, it might just mean you will last a few more weeks or a month. Similarly, burns to significant amounts of your body can be life-threatening and will require intensive hospital care. Emergency response teams in countries with active volcanoes are often trained to focus on rapid evacuation of these injured as time is vital. It's also important to remember that there is going to be a lot of stuff on fire in the aftermath. If you hid in a building, it might now be burning. Health effects subsequent to the acute injury include tracheobronchitis, pneumonia, and acute respiratory distress syndrome resulting from irritation and secondary infection injured respiratory tissues. So now you're more clued in on just how scary PDCs are, let's look at the information we have on how people survive. As mentioned above, the survival rate from pyroclastic flows is very, very low. Death to injury ratios can be as high as 10 to 1. That's one wounded for every 10 deaths. 
As mentioned above, airways are a big vulnerability and are one of the only things that you can try to protect. The first thing to consider would be cover your nose and mouth. The most famous survivor of the Mount Pele PDC reportedly escaped by protecting his airways by stuffing his urine-soaked clothes into the small vent in a sheltered prison cell. He also reportedly didn't breathe while the ash was coming in. So if you covered your mouth and you haven't breathed in any superheated dust, okay, great. What about skin contact? This is a worse problem for hot climates where people tend to wear less clothes that expose more skin. Depending on the material, it can sometimes melt and stick to you. But according to the research into victims of recent PDCs in the Philippines, covering yourself with as many layers as possible, think of it as creating as much of a barrier between you and the PDC as you possibly can. So now we come to the big Google question. Can you outrun a pyroclastic flow? Not even close. You can run at maybe around 13 kilometers an hour. The PDC will be on you in moments. I mean, yes, if you're already right on the limit of where it's going to reach, then definitely run for it. But if you're close, it's probably better to consider finding some kind of shelter. Death rates are much worse if it hits you in the open. In actuality though, the only survivors of PDCs tend to be those right on the outer edges of where PDCs travel anyway. So can you outdrive it? No, probably not. Unless you're at the edge of the impact zone or already driving really fast in the right direction away from it, it's probably going to catch you if you're in its path. There are anecdotal stories of people surviving in their cars, so it seems some shelter is better than none. Can you dodge a PDC? PDCs obey the law of gravity and will channel themselves into the most efficient path downwards. They also rarely spill down a volcano on all sides. This means that if you're lucky enough to be standing out of its way, you might escape. However, people were killed as they observed a PDC in Japan from a ridge they assumed was safe. The PDC changed course and killed all of them. Similarly, at the very famous and very active Fuego volcano in Guatemala, in 2018 people were seen standing on a bridge over a river taking pictures of the incoming PDC. This is precisely the worst idea you could have. A natural channel like a river is very likely a path for a PDC. So inside or outside? As mentioned earlier, survival rates increase when inside buildings. They also increase if doors and windows are shut and barred. This reduces the volume of PDC that you can come into contact with and avoids flying debris that could kill or injure you. Predictive models of a PDC around Vesuvius actually speculate that casualty rates would be lower if it occurred at night, as more people would be inside asleep. Are you safe if you're on water? No. PDCs can travel over water. The material on the bottom will evaporate the surface, creating uplift for the lighter material above. PDCs can travel huge ranges across water in this way, and historical accounts from Tambora report sailors on a nearby boat being badly burned. Should you stay or should you go? There may well be other subsequent PDCs, even straight after the first. The difficulty would be deciding whether or not you can escape to safety through the dangerous and likely burning ruins of wherever you are. Do you know when they're going to happen? Not really. Volcanology is a rapidly growing, but still very new, discipline. And definite answers about when a volcano will erupt and what will come out of it are not questions that can be answered with complete accuracy. You can stay away from places that have had them before, but is this realistic? Not really, especially people who live there locally. You would think that Vesuvius, Europe's most dangerous volcano, which caused the famous Pompeii disaster and several others, but that's for another video, would be a no-go area for modern humans, right? Think again. The city of Naples lies in the shadow of the volcano, home to over 3 million people with 600,000 in the direct danger zone. There is also the assumption that with modern technology, an eruption would be picked up weeks or months before it occurred, allowing time for evacuations of the surrounding area. This is largely true, but volcanoes like Vesuvius are so dangerous precisely because they tend not to give off warnings before they erupt, making evacuations extremely difficult. The takeaway is, not being anywhere near PDCs is the best way to not be killed by them. So there you have it, pyroclastic flows. They are rare and they are deadly. We don't have a good idea of how to reliably survive one. People who do are still the exception. Maybe they are the ultimate damn nature, you are very scary thing we face. But we as a society have to deal with them nonetheless. So knowing more about them can't hurt, can it? I've included the links to sources I use for this video and will be doing more videos on Pompeii and Mount Pele because they're fascinating and there's way too much to say here about them. If you have any experiences or thoughts about pyroclastic flows, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Give it a like and subscribe if you want and take care.